Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome to my channel created by Rebecca. In this week's video we're going to have a look at how I made the song thrush painting behind me from start to finish. Let's get started. I'm using the Gold Line Studio watercolour pad. It's pretty inexpensive, it's 100 sheets for around £18 at the moment. It's a mixture of cotton and lignin free cellulose. So it is acid free and it has really good archival qualities but it may not be suitable for perhaps pure watercolour. It's cold pressed so it's got a really lovely texture which shows up when you pull strokes across it. Each sheet measures 24 centimetres by 32 and it's 200 GSM or 90 pounds. It has buckled a little bit but to be honest I wasn't intending to sell it, I was thinking I was going to make prints from it instead. I've got a real motley crew of paintbrushes that I've used on this painting. I've got Royal Langnickel Soft Grip, I've got Nick Pro, and these are a micro set of paintbrushes. I've also got Pro Art Masterstroke brushes, these are the miniatures set and the Artmaster Pearl series number 11. This is actually probably the brush I use the most, the number 11. It comes to a gorgeous point and it makes it really multifunctional in a painting like this with lots of different levels of detail. My paint of choice is the Joe Sonia's Matte Flow Acrylic Paint. There's an absolutely gorgeous range of colours and although I admit it's tricky to pick off a printed colour chart. It is really worth getting yourself some basic colours and start exploring them. They dry to such a velvety matte texture, it's gorgeous. The colours I used on this piece are Titanium White, Warm White, Smoked Pearl, Naples Yellow Hue, Cadmium Yellow Light, Celadon, Moss Green, Green Oxide, Pine Green, Phthalo Green, although I did only end up using a tiny bit of that, Mid Value Cool Beige, which was previously Provincial Beige, Red Earth, Burnt Umber, Payne's Grey and Carbon Black. And before I get painting I set everything out on my wet palette. This is my homemade wet palette. This box of course housed some very well known chocolates. Inside you can see I have a piece of greaseproof paper. That is folded round a few sheets of kitchen towel which are wet and then allowed to drain off. It's all folded neatly round, put in the bottom of the container and then I like to set my colours out round the edge and that gives me plenty of room in the middle for mixing. Wet palettes are fantastic for allowing you to keep working with the same paint for quite some time. The phthalo green that's on here is still wet and I painted this picture a week ago so that's pretty good because this doesn't have a proper seal though you do have to keep an eye on it. Let's go and have a look at that painting process. I started out with a very simple pencil sketch, quite light. Uh, we're going to end up obliterating most of this but we don't want to damage the paper so keep your strokes light gestural, they don't need to be super accurate. Unlike with watercolour you can move things around a lot with acrylic painting. In fact the poor song thrush's right leg gets moved location three or four times during the painting because I just wasn't convinced by it. I'm starting to lay down some initial background colours I started with moss green, green oxide, pine green, tiny bit of celadon, tiny bit of phthalo green. I decided the phthalo green was probably a little bit too blue 
and I ended up painting over most of that and there'll also be blends of two or more of the greens as well on my palette I also had things like Payne's Grey warm white, titanium white, smoke pearl and I'm adding little dabs of each as I go and creating my own unique mixtures of colour I have multiple reference photographs that I'm working from I like to gather a whole bunch of images and then do a little bit of a sketch from this one, a bit of a sketch from that one and then I sort of arrive at this composite for my my final plan for the painting. So I do lots of work in my sketchbook before I get going on this. We're now bringing some colour onto the song thrush and I started with the mid value cool beige and a little bit of the warm white just to start to ghost in where the fawny colours are on the song thrush. And then I started to beef that up with burnt umber and I added both those colours into that main branch that the song thrush is sitting on. The background and the branch that the song thrush is sitting on is all from my imagination and as I say the song thrush has been taken from lots of references where I have built up this composite image of what my final song thrush is going to look like. You can see me starting to add a suggestion of leaves. I like to add these in a kind of one stroke or two stroke shape. So you pop the tip of the brush down on the paper, press the belly of the brush into the paper and as you're pulling you lift off and that gives you the end where the leaf meets the stem. I think we'll have a look at those techniques in a future video. I'm coming back in with a pencil here just to try and firm up where the main features of the bird are. We jump ahead quite a bit here. You can see I've layered in all sorts of branches and leaves and in lots of different shades of green. I've got some really lovely dark ones. And it's giving this sense of a, a tangled hedgerow background without having to laboriously and religiously go in and make every leaf look realistic. I wanted the background to look almost more like a pattern 
and then the focus would be on the song thrush himself. All the branches point towards the song thrush and he sits in the middle. I've now covered the chest area with titanium white and also warm white and I've kept the warmer white up near the throat area. Every now and again I will come in and sort of crisp up the line between the background and the song thrush. You have to be a little bit careful about how much water you use with acrylic paints. It can break down the bonds and make the painting quite unstable long term. So I use Flow Medium, again by Jo Sonia, which is it's it's like the, the the fluff that's inside the paint. It's like the the bulking agent, the binder that's in the paint, and it, you're just making it more transparent by adding more of what it is. So you maintain those chemical bonds and it helps the paint flow but keeps the integrity of the paint once it's dried. Last thing you want is it all flaking off on you. But that allows me to add these sort of ethereal layers of colour We're now adding the unmistakable markings to the chest of the song thrush. They're almost like upside down love hearts, so two simple dabs with the brush give you each a little love heart. And I'm using my reference to give me a guide as to where those marks should be. Each song thrush of course will be unique. If it fluffs its feathers up and they come back down, then they will land slightly differently each time, so you don't have to be super specific. But it's nice to try and capture that real sense of what a song thrush would look like. Now I'm coming in and refining the head, the beak, around the eye. You can see I've come over a lot of the really dark burnt umber colour with paler mixes of that with the mid-value cool beige, a bit of warm white and I'm just building up subtle colours and adding sheen. When you really start observing bird's markings, you realise how many different shades and tones and layers there are to each type of bird. You could just go, oh, well, the song thrush is brown and white. No, it's not. There's greys, there's beiges, there's fawns, there's 
lemony yellows and in fact you can see I've now added more yellow to the upper throat section and I use naphthol yellow hue for that adding it with the warm white and just carefully building up that colour Here you can see me adding some more information to his surroundings. So adding extra branches and twigs into the space around him. Refining the shape of the branch he's sitting on. Adding different textures and tones using all the different mixes of paints that I've got going on on my wet palette. Some of these leaves look remarkably pale, but actually you'll see as it dries down, it goes really deep and dark. That's purely the wetness of the paint, catching the light as I'm applying it, and then once it's dried, it mats right down. And you get this almost velvety texture. The colours look right as I'm applying them, it's just that you're seeing the reflection of light on the, the wetness. adding lots of little tiny leaves here and then bring an extra branch over his head that he really is surrounded almost in a wreath of greenery. And so there it is, all finished and, of course, signed. As I say, I'm probably not going to sell the original. I'm more likely to be making prints from it, or maybe even things like vinyl stickers, canvas bags, notebooks. Did you know you can buy some of my work through my Redbubble shop? It's linked in the description box below. And I've enabled so many different options, from simple stickers and postcards, to canvas bags, cushions, baseball hats. <laughs> so keep your eye on the shop. As I scan and upload more work, it will all be going onto Redbubble. 
I actually have this sticker as a notebook and it is scrummy. Really pleased with it. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.